In mathematics, a continuous function is a function for which sufficiently small changes in the input result in arbitrarily small changes in the output. Otherwise, a function is said to be a discontinuous function. A continuous function with a continuous inverse function is called a homeomorphism. Continuity of functions is one of the core concepts of topology, which is treated in full generality below. The introductory portion of this article focuses on the special case where the inputs and outputs of functions are real numbers. A stronger form of continuity is uniform continuity. In addition, this article discusses the definition for the more general case of functions between two metric spaces. In order theory, especially in domain theory, one considers a notion of continuity known as Scott continuity. Other forms of continuity do exist but they are not discussed in this article. As an example, consider the function h t, which describes the height of a growing flower at time t. This function is continuous. By contrast, if m t denotes the amount of money in a bank account at time t, then the function jumps at each point in time when money is deposited or withdrawn, so the function m t is discontinuous. History A form of the epsilon delta definition of continuity was first given by Bernard Bolzano in 1817. Augustin Louis Cauchy defined continuity of y equals f x display style y equals f x as follows: an infinitely small increment alpha display style alpha of the independent variable x always produces an infinitely small change f x plus alpha minus f x display style f x plus alpha f x of the dependent variable y c e g cause analyze p 34 Cauchy defined infinitely small quantities in terms of variable quantities, and his definition of continuity closely parallels the infinitesimal definition used today, see microcontinuity. The formal definition and the distinction between pointwise continuity and uniform continuity were first given by Bolzano in the 1830s but the work wasn't published until the 1930s. Like Bolzano, Karl Weierstrass denied continuity of a function at a point c unless it was defined at and on both sides of c, but Edouard Gorsat allowed the function to be defined only at and on one side of c, and Camille Jordan allowed it even if the function was defined only at c. All three of those non-equivalent definitions of pointwise continuity are still in use. Edward Heiner provided the first published definition of uniform continuity in 1872, but based these ideas on lectures given by Peter Gustav Lejeune Dirichlet in 1854. Real functions Definition A real function, that is a function from real numbers to real numbers can be represented by a graph in the Cartesian plane, such a function is continuous if roughly speaking, the graph is a single unbroken curve whose domain is the entire real line, a more mathematically rigorous definition is given below, a rigorous definition of continuity of real functions is usually given in a first course in calculus in terms of the idea of a limit. First, a function f with variable x is said to be continuous at the point c on the real line, if the limit of f x, as x approaches that point c, is equal to the value f c, and second, the function, as a whole, is said to be continuous, if it is continuous at every point. A function is said to be discontinuous, or to have a discontinuity, at some point when it is not continuous there. These points themselves are also addressed as discontinuities. There are several different definitions of continuity of a function. 
Sometimes a function is said to be continuous if it is continuous at every point in its domain. In this case, the function f x topic tan x with the domain of all real x does not equal 2 n plus 1 pi 2 n any integer is continuous. Sometimes an exception is made for boundaries of the domain. For example, the graph of the function f x square root x with the domain of all non-negative reals has a left-hand endpoint. In this case, only the limit from the right is required to equal the value of the function. Under this definition, f is continuous at the boundary x equals zero, and so for all non-negative arguments. The most common and restrictive definition is that a function is continuous if it is continuous at all real numbers. In this case, the previous two examples are not continuous, but every polynomial function is continuous, as are the sine, cosine, and exponential functions. Care should be exercised in using the word continuous, so that it is clear from the context which meaning of the word is intended. Using mathematical notation, there are several ways to define continuous functions in each of the three senses mentioned above. Let f d r display style f colon d right arrow math b f r quad be a function defined on a subset d display style d of the set r display style math b f r of real numbers. This subset d display style d is the domain of f some possible choices include d equals r display style d equals math bf r quad d display style d is the whole set of real numbers or for r and b real numbers d equals a b equals x element of r a x b display style d equals a b equals x in math bf r a l e q x l e q b quad d display style d is a closed interval or d equals a b equals x element of r a x b display style d equals a b equals x in math b f r a d display style d is an open interval. In case of the domain d display style d being defined as an open interval a display style a and b display style b are no boundaries in the above sense and the values of f a display style f a and f b display style f b do not matter for continuity on d display style d topic definition in terms of limits of functions The function f is continuous at some point c of its domain if the limit of f x, as x approaches c through the domain of f, exists and is equal to f c. In mathematical notation, this is written as lim x c f x equals f c display style lim underscore X to C F X equals F C in detail this means three conditions first F has to be defined at C guaranteed by the requirement that C is in the domain of F second the limit on the left hand side of that equation has to exist third the value of this limit must equal F C we have here assumed that the domain of F does not have any isolated points for example, an interval or union of intervals has no isolated points. Topic. Definition in terms of neighborhoods A neighborhood of a point C is a set that contains all points of the domain within some fixed distance of C. 
Intuitively, a function is continuous at a point c if the range of the restriction of f to a neighborhood of c shrinks to a single point f c as the width of the neighborhood around c shrinks to zero. More precisely, a function f is continuous at a point c of its domain if, for any neighborhood n 1 f c display style n underscore 1 f c there is a neighborhood n 2 c display style n underscore 2 c such that f x element of n 1 f c display style f x in n underscore 1 f c whenever x element of n 2 c display style x in n underscore 2 c this definition only requires that the domain and the codomain are topological spaces and is thus the most general definition it follows from this definition that a function f is automatically continuous at every isolated point of its domain. As a specific example, every real-valued function on the set of integers is continuous. Topic. Definition in terms of limits of sequences One can instead require that for any sequence, x n n element of n display style x underscore n underscore n in mass bound n of points in the domain which converges to c the corresponding sequence f x n n element of n Display style left f x underscore n right underscore n in mass bound n converges to f c in mathematical notation x n n element of n d lim n infinity x n equals c Lim N infinity F X N equals F C Display style foral x underscore n underscore n in mass bound n subset d lim underscore n to inf t x underscore n equals c right arrow lim underscore n to inf t f x underscore n equals f c Topic Weierstrass and Jordan definitions epsilon delta of continuous functions explicitly including the definition of the limit of a function we obtain a self-contained definition given a function f dr as above and an element x0 of the domain d f is said to be continuous at the point x0 when the following holds for any number epsilon greater than 0 however small there exists some number delta greater than 0 such that for all x in the domain of f with x x zero minus delta f x zero minus epsilon f x f x zero plus epsilon. Display style f x underscore zero var epsilon. Alternatively written, continuity of f dr at x zero element a d means that for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero such that for all x in d x minus x zero delta f x minus f x zero epsilon. Display style x x underscore zero. More intuitively, we can say that if we want to get all the f x values to stay in some small neighborhood around f x zero, we simply need to choose a small enough neighborhood for the x values around x zero. If we can do that, no matter how small the f x neighborhood is, then f is continuous at x zero. In modern terms, this is generalized by the definition of continuity of a function with respect to a basis for the topology, here the metric topology. Weierstrass had required that the interval x0 minus delta topic. Definition in terms of control of the remainder 
In proofs and numerical analysis we often need to know how fast limits are converging, or in other words, control of the remainder. We can formalize this to a definition of continuity. A function c 0 infinity 0 infinity display style c 0 inf t to 0 inf t is called a control function if c is non decreasing i n f delta greater than 0 c delta equals 0 display style inf underscore delta greater than 0 c delta equals 0 a function f dr is c continuous at x 0 if f x minus f x 0 c x minus x 0 Display style f x f x underscore zero leqc x x underscore zero for all x element of d display style x in d a function is continuous in x zero if it is c continuous for some control function c. This approach leads naturally to refining the notion of continuity by restricting the set of admissible control functions. For a given set of control functions, c display style math call c a function is c display style math call c continuous if it is c display style c continuous for some c element of c display style c in math call c for example the lipschitz and holder continuous functions of exponent alpha below are defined by the set of control functions c l i p s c h i T Z equals C C Delta equals K Delta K greater than zero Display style math call C underscore mathram Lipschitz equals C C delta equals K delta K greater than zero respectively c holder minus alpha equals display style math call c underscore text holder alpha equals c c delta equals k delta alpha k greater than Zero display style c c delta equals k delta caret alpha k greater than zero. Topic definition using oscillation. Continuity can also be defined in terms of oscillation. A function f is continuous at a point x zero if and only if its oscillation at that point is zero. In symbols, omega f x zero equals zero. Display style omega underscore f x underscore zero equals zero. A benefit of this definition is that it quantifies discontinuity, the oscillation gives how much a function is discontinuous at a point. 
This definition is useful in descriptive set theory to study the set of discontinuities and continuous points. The continuous points are the intersection of the sets where the oscillation is less than epsilon, hence a g-delta set, and gives a very quick proof of one direction of the Lebesgue integrability condition. The oscillation is equivalent to the epsilon delta definition by a simple rearrangement, and by using a limit lim -sup, lim -inf, to define oscillation, if at a given point, for a given epsilon zero there is no delta that satisfies the epsilon delta definition, then the oscillation is at least epsilon zero, and conversely if for every epsilon there is a desired delta, the oscillation is zero. The oscillation definition can be naturally generalized to maps from a topological space to a metric space. Topic. Definition using the hyperreals Cauchy defined continuity of a function in the following intuitive terms, an infinitesimal change in the independent variable corresponds to an infinitesimal change of the dependent variable see caused analyze, page 34. Nonstandard analysis is a way of making this mathematically rigorous. The real line is augmented by the addition of infinite and infinitesimal numbers to form the hyperreal numbers. In non-standard analysis, continuity can be defined as follows. A real-valued function f is continuous at x if its natural extension to the hyperreals has the property that for all infinitesimal dx, f x plus dx, minus f, x is infinitesimal, see microcontinuity. In other words, an infinitesimal increment of the independent variable always produces to an infinitesimal change of the dependent variable, giving a modern expression to Augustin Louis Cauchy's definition of continuity. Topic: Construction of continuous functions. Checking the continuity of a given function can be simplified by checking one of the above defining properties for the building blocks of the given function. It is straightforward to show that the sum of two functions, continuous on some domain, is also continuous on this domain. Given f g d r display style f g colon d right arrow math b f r then the sum of continuous functions s equals f plus g display style s equals f plus g defined by s x equals f x plus g x Display style s x equals f x plus g x for all x element of d. Display style x in d is continuous in d. Display style d. The same holds for the product of continuous functions p equals f g. Display style p equals f c d o t g defined by p x equals f x g x display style p x equals f x c d o t g x for all x element of d display style x in d is continuous in d display style d combining the above preservations of continuity and the continuity of constant functions and of the identity function i x equals x display style i x equals x on r display style math bfr one arrives at the continuity of all polynomial functions on R display style math such as 
f x equals x three plus x two five x plus three pictured on the right. In the same way, it can be shown that the reciprocal of a continuous function r equals one f display style r equals one f defined by r x equals 1 f x display style r x equals 1 f x for all x element of d display style x in d such that f x does not equal 0 display style f x n e q 0 is continuous in D x f x equals zero. Display style d small set minus x f x equals zero. This implies that excluding the roots of g display style g, the quotient of continuous functions q equals f G display style Q equals F per gram defined by Q X equals F X G X display style Q X equals F by per gram X for all X element of D display style X in D such that g x does not equal zero. Display style g x n e q zero is also continuous on d x g x equals zero. Display style d small set minus x g x equals zero. For example, the function pictured y x equals two x minus one x plus two display style y x equals frac two by minus one x plus two is defined for all real numbers x does not equal minus 2 and is continuous at every such point. Thus it is a continuous function. The question of continuity at x topic minus 2 does not arise, since x minus 2 is not in the domain of y. There is no continuous function f r r that agrees with y x for all x does not equal minus 2. Since the function sine is continuous on all reals, the sinc function g x equals sin x x is defined and continuous for all real x does not equal zero. However, unlike the previous example, g can be extended to a continuous function on all real numbers by defining the value g zero to be one, which is the limit of g x when x approaches zero, i.e., g zero equals lim x zero sin x x equals one. Display style g zero equals lim underscore x right arrow zero frac sin x x equals one. Thus, by setting g x equals sin x x if x does not equal o one if x equals zero. Display style g x equals begin cases frac sin x x and text if x n e q zero one and text if x equals zero end cases. The sinc function becomes a continuous function on all real numbers. The term removable singularity is used in such cases, when redefining values of a function to coincide with the appropriate limits make a function continuous at specific points. A more involved construction of continuous functions is the function composition. Given two continuous functions g d g r r g r and f d f r r f d g 
Display style quad G colon D underscore G subset ec mass BF R right arrow R underscore G subset ec mass BF R quad text and quad F colon D underscore F subset ec mass BF R right arrow R underscore F subset ec D underscore G Their composition, denoted as C equals G F D F R display style C equals G circ F colon D underscore F right arrow mass B F R and defined by C X equals G F X display style C X equals G F X is continuous. This construction allows stating, for example, that E sin lane x display style E caret sin lane x is continuous for all x greater than zero display style x greater than zero. Topic examples of discontinuous functions An example of a discontinuous function is the heavy side step function h, display style h, defined by h x equals 1 if x 0 if x 0, display style h x equals begin cases 1 and text if x g e q 0 0 and text if x pick for instance epsilon equals 1 half, display style var epsilon equals 1 half. Then there is no delta, display style delta, neighborhood around x equals zero, display style x equals zero, i.e., no open interval. Minus delta delta display style delta delta with delta greater than zero display style delta greater than zero that will force all the H x display style H x values to be within the epsilon display style var epsilon neighborhood of H zero display style H zero, i.e. within one, two, three, two display style one half three halves intuitively we can think of this type of discontinuity as a sudden jump in function values similarly the signum or sine function sgn x equals 1 if x greater than 0 if x equals 0 minus 1 if x 0 display style operator name sgn x equals begin cases 1 and text if x greater than 0 0 and text if x equals 0 minus 1 and text if x is discontinuous at x equals 0 display style x equals 0 but continuous everywhere else Yet another example, the function f x equals sin x minus two if x does not equal O O if x equals zero. Display style f x equals begin cases sin left x caret minus two right and text if x n e q zero zero and text if x equals zero end cases is continuous everywhere apart from x equals zero. Display style x equals zero. Besides plausible continuities and discontinuities like above, there are also functions with a behavior, often coined pathological, for example, Tomei's function, f x equals 1 if x equals O1 q if x equals p q in lowest terms is a rational number 0 if x is irrational, display style f x equals begin cases 1 and text if x equals 0 frac 1 q and text if x equals frac p q text in lowest terms is a rational number 0 and text if x text is a rational end cases is continuous at all irrational numbers and discontinuous at all rational numbers 
In a similar vein, Dirichlet's function, the indicator function for the set of rational numbers, d x equals 0 if x is a rational element of R q 1 if x is rational element of q display style d x equals begin cases 0 and text if x text is a rational in math bound R small set minus math bound q 1 and text if x text is rational in math bound q end cases is nowhere continuous. topic properties topic intermediate value theorem the intermediate value theorem is an existence theorem based on the real number property of completeness and states if the real valued function f is continuous on the closed interval a, b, and k is some number between f a and f b, then there is some number c in a, b, such that f c equals k. For example, if a child grows from 1 meter to 1.5 meters between the ages of 2 and 6 years, then, at some time between 2 and 6 years of age, the child's height must have been 1.25 meters. As a consequence, if f is continuous on a, b, and f a, and f b differ in sign, then, at some point c in a, b, f, c, must equal zero. Topic. Extreme value theorem The extreme value theorem states that if a function f is defined on a closed interval a, B or any closed and bounded set and is continuous there, then the function attains its maximum, i.e. there exists C element of a, B with f, C, f, x for all x element of a, B. The same is true of the minimum of f. These statements are not, in general, true if the function is defined on an open interval a, B or any set that is not both closed and bounded, as, for example, the continuous function f, x equals 1 x defined on the open interval 0 1 does not attain a maximum being unbounded above equals topic relation to differentiability and integrability equals every differentiable function f a b r display style f colon a b right arrow mass b f r is continuous as can be shown the converse does not hold, for example, the absolute value function f x equals x equals x if x zero minus x if x zero display style f x equals x equals begin cases x and text if x geq zero x and text if x is everywhere continuous. However, it is not differentiable at x equals zero but is so everywhere else. Weierstrass's function is also everywhere continuous but nowhere differentiable. The derivative f x of a differentiable function f x need not be continuous. If f x is continuous, f x is said to be continuously differentiable. The set of such functions is denoted c1 a b. More generally, the set of functions f omega r display style f colon omega right arrow mass b f r from an open interval or open subset of r omega to the reals such that f is n times differentiable and such that the nth derivative of f is continuous is denoted c n omega c differentiability class. In the field of computer graphics, properties related but not identical to CO, C1, C2 are sometimes called G0 continuity of position, G1 continuity of tangency, and G2 continuity of curvature, C smoothness of curves and surfaces. Every continuous function f a b r Display style f colon a b right arrow math b f r is integrable. For example, in the sense of the Riemann integral, the converse does not hold, as the integrable but discontinuous sine function shows. Topic: Pointwise and uniform limits. Given a sequence f one f 2 i r 
Display style F underscore one, F underscore two, DOTSC, colon I, right arrow, mass BFR a function such that the limit F x equals lim n infinity F n x display style F x equals lim underscore n right arrow inf F underscore n x exists for all x in D, the resulting function f x is referred to as the pointwise limit of the sequence of functions f n n element of n. The pointwise limit function need not be continuous, even if all functions f n are continuous, as the animation at the right shows. However, f is continuous if all functions f n are continuous and the sequence converges uniformly, by the uniform convergence theorem. This theorem can be used to show that the exponential functions, logarithms, square root function, trigonometric functions are continuous. Topic directional and semi-continuity discontinuous functions may be discontinuous in a restricted way, giving rise to the concept of directional continuity or right and left continuous functions and semi-continuity. Roughly speaking, a function is right continuous if no jump occurs when the limit point is approached from the right. Formally, f is said to be right continuous at the point c if the following holds, for any number epsilon greater than zero however small, there exists some number delta greater than zero such that for all x in the domain with c, f, x, minus f, c, epsilon. Display style f x f c. This is the same condition as for continuous functions, except that it is required to hold for x strictly larger than c only. Requiring it instead for all x with c minus delta a function f is lower semi-continuous if roughly any jumps that might occur only go down, but not up. That is, for any epsilon greater than zero, there exists some number delta greater than zero such that for all x in the domain with x minus c, f, x, f, c, minus e. Display style f, x, g, e, q, f, c, epsilon, the reverse condition is upper semi-continuity. Topic continuous functions between metric spaces The concept of continuous real valued functions can be generalized to functions between metric spaces. A metric space is a set X equipped with a function called metric dx, that can be thought of as a measurement of the distance of any two elements in X formally. The metric is a function dx, x times xr, display style d underscore x colon x times x right arrow, mass bfr, that satisfies a number of requirements, notably the triangle inequality. Given two metric spaces x, dx, and y, dy, and a function f, x, y, display style f, colon x, right arrow y, then f is continuous at the point c in x, with respect to the given metrics, if for any positive real number epsilon, there exists a positive real number delta such that all x in x satisfying dx, x, c. As in the case of real functions above, this is equivalent to the condition that for every sequence xn in x with limit lim xn. Topic c, we have lim f xn f c. The latter condition can be weakened as follows: f is continuous at the point c if and only if for every convergent sequence x n in x with limit c, the sequence f x n is a Cauchy sequence, and c is in the domain of f. The set of points at which a function between metric spaces is continuous is a G delta set. This follows from the epsilon delta definition of continuity. This notion of continuity is applied, for example, in functional analysis. A key statement in this area says that a linear operator T V W display style T colon V right arrow W between normed vector spaces V and W, which are vector spaces equipped with a compatible norm, denoted X is continuous if and only if it is bounded, that is, there is a constant k such that t x k x display style t x l e q k x for all x in v. 
Topic uniform, Holder and Lipschitz continuity The concept of continuity for functions between metric spaces can be strengthened in various ways by limiting the way delta depends on epsilon and c in the definition above. Intuitively, a function f as above is uniformly continuous if the delta does not depend on the point c. More precisely, it is required that for every real number epsilon greater than zero there exists delta greater than zero such that for every c, b element of x with dx b, c, dy, f, b, f, c, k, dx, b, c, alpha, display style d underscore y, f, b, f, c, l, e, q, k, c, d, o, t, d underscore x, b, c, carrot, alpha, holds. Any holder continuous function is uniformly continuous. The particular case α equals 1 is referred to as Lipschitz continuity. That is, a function is Lipschitz continuous if there is a constant k such that the inequality dy f b f c k dx b c display style d underscore y f b f c l e q k c d o t d underscore x b c holds for any b c in x. The Lipschitz condition occurs, for example, in the Picard-Lindelof theorem concerning the solutions of ordinary differential equations. Topic. Continuous functions between topological spaces Another, more abstract, notion of continuity is continuity of functions between topological spaces in which there generally is no formal notion of distance, as there is in the case of metric spaces. A topological space is a set X together with a topology on X, which is a set of subsets of X satisfying a few requirements with respect to their unions and intersections that generalize the properties of the open balls in metric spaces while still allowing to talk about the neighborhoods of a given point. The elements of a topology are called open subsets of X with respect to the topology. A function f x y display style f colon x right arrow y between two topological spaces x and y is continuous if for every open set v y the inverse image f minus 1 v equals x element of x f x element of V display style f caret minus one v equals x in x f x in v is an open subset of x. That is, f is a function between the sets x and y, not on the elements of the topology T x, but the continuity of f depends on the topologies used on x and y. This is equivalent to the condition that the preimages of the closed sets which are the complements of the open subsets in Y are closed in X. An extreme example, if a set X is given the discrete topology in which every subset is open, all functions f x t display style f colon x right arrow t to any topological space t are continuous. On the other hand, if X is equipped with the indiscrete topology, in which the only open subsets are the empty set and X, and the space T set is at least T0, then the only continuous functions are the constant functions. Conversely, any function whose range is indiscrete is continuous. Topic. Continuity at a point The translation in the language of neighborhoods of the epsilon delta definition of continuity leads to the following definition of the continuity at a point. This definition is equivalent to the same statement with neighborhoods restricted to open neighborhoods and can be restated in several ways by using preimages rather than images. Also, as every set that contains a neighborhood is also a neighborhood, and f minus 1 v display style f caret minus 1 v is the largest subset u of x such that f u v this definition may be simplified into 
as an open set is a set that is a neighborhood of all its points, a function f x y display style f x right arrow y is continuous at every point of x if and only if it is a continuous function. If x and y are metric spaces, it is equivalent to consider the neighborhood system of open balls centered at x and f x instead of all neighborhoods. This gives back the above delta epsilon definition of continuity in the context of metric spaces. In general topological spaces, there is no notion of nearness or distance. If however the target space is a Hausdorff space, it is still true that f is continuous at a if and only if the limit of f as x approaches a is f a. At an isolated point, every function is continuous. Topic. Alternative definitions Several equivalent definitions for a topological structure exist and thus there are several equivalent ways to define a continuous function. Topic: <inaudible> Sequences and nets. In several contexts, the topology of a space is conveniently specified in terms of limit points. In many instances, this is accomplished by specifying when a point is the limit of a sequence, but for some spaces that are too large in some sense, one specifies also when a point is the limit of more general sets of points indexed by a directed set, known as nets. A function is continuous only if it takes limits of sequences to limits of sequences. In the former case, preservation of limits is also sufficient, in the latter, a function may preserve all limits of sequences yet still fail to be continuous, and preservation of nets is a necessary and sufficient condition. In detail, a function f, x, y is sequentially continuous if whenever a sequence x n in x converges to a limit x, the sequence f x n converges to f x. Thus sequentially continuous functions preserve sequential limits every continuous function is sequentially continuous if x is a first countable space and countable choice holds then the converse also holds any function preserving sequential limits is continuous in particular if x is a metric space sequential continuity and continuity are equivalent for non first countable spaces sequential continuity might be strictly weaker than continuity the spaces for which the two properties are equivalent are called sequential spaces. This motivates the consideration of nets instead of sequences in general topological spaces. Continuous functions preserve limits of nets, and in fact this property characterizes continuous functions. Topic. Closure operator definition Instead of specifying the open subsets of a topological space, the topology can also be determined by a closure operator denoted CL, which assigns to any subset X its closure, or an interior operator denoted int, which assigns to any subset A of X its interior. In these terms, a function f x c l x c L display style f colon x mathrm cl to x mathrm cl between topological spaces is continuous in the sense above if and only if for all subsets a of x f c l a c l f a Display style f mathrm cl a subset x mathrm cl f a. That is to say, given any element x of x that is in the closure of any subset a, f x belongs to the closure of f a. This is equivalent to the requirement that for all subsets of of x, f minus one c l a c L F minus one R 
Display style F carrot, minus one, mathram, CL, a subsetec, mathram, CL, F carrot, minus one, a Moreover F X I N T X I N T Display style F colon X, mathram, int two X, mathram, int is continuous if and only if f minus 1 i n t a i n t f minus 1 a display style f caret minus 1 mathrm int a subset mathrm int f caret minus 1 a for any subset A of Y. Topic Properties If F, X, Y and G, Y, Z are continuous, then so is the composition G F, X, Z. If F, X, Y is continuous and X is compact, then F X is compact. X is connected, then F X is connected. X is path connected, then F X is path connected. X is Lindelof, then F X is Lindelof. X is separable, then F X is separable. The possible topologies on a fixed set X are partially ordered. A topology tau one is said to be coarser than another topology tau two. Notation tau one tau two. If every open subset with respect to tau one is also open with respect to tau two, then the identity map. I D X X tau two X tau one is continuous if and only if tau one tau two. See also comparison of topologies. More generally, a continuous function X tau X Y tau Y display style X tau underscore X right arrow Y tau underscore Y stays continuous if the topology tau y is replaced by a coarser topology and or tau x is replaced by a finer topology topic <laughs> homeomorphisms symmetric to the concept of a continuous map is an open map for which images of open sets are open in fact, if an open map F has an inverse function, that inverse is continuous, and if a continuous map G has an inverse, that inverse is open. Given a bijective function F between two topological spaces, the inverse function F-1 need not be continuous. A bijective continuous function with continuous inverse function is called a homeomorphism. If a continuous bijection has as its domain a compact space and its codomain is Hausdorff, then it is a homeomorphism. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Defining topologies via continuous functions. Given a function f x s display style f colon x right arrow s where X is a topological space and S is a set without a specified topology, the final topology on S is defined by letting the open sets of S be those subsets of S for which F minus 1 A is open in X. If S has an existing topology, F is continuous with respect to this topology if and only if the existing topology is coarser than the final topology on S. Thus the final topology can be characterized as the finest topology on S that makes F continuous. If F is surjective, this topology is canonically identified with the quotient topology under the equivalence relation defined by F. Dually, for a function f from a set S to a topological space X, the initial topology on S is defined by designating as an open set every subset of S such that a equals f minus one u display style a equals f caret minus one u 
for some open subset U of X if S has an existing topology, F is continuous with respect to this topology if and only if the existing topology is finer than the initial topology on S thus the initial topology can be characterized as the coarsest topology on S that makes F continuous. If F is injective, this topology is canonically identified with the subspace topology of S, viewed as a subset of X. A topology on a set S is uniquely determined by the class of all continuous functions S X display style S right arrow X into all topological spaces X dually. A similar idea can be applied to maps X S display style X right arrow S. Topic. Related notions Various other mathematical domains use the concept of continuity in different, but related meanings. For example, in order theory, an order preserving function f, x, y between particular types of partially ordered sets x and y is continuous if for each directed subset A of x, we have sub f a equals f sub a. Here SUP is the supremum with respect to the orderings in X and Y, respectively. This notion of continuity is the same as topological continuity when the partially ordered sets are given the Scott topology. In category theory, a functor F C D display style F colon mathcal C right arrow mathcal D between two categories is called continuous, if it commutes with small limits. That is to say, lim i element of i f c i f lim i element of i c i Display style var project lim underscore i in i f c underscore i kong f left var project lim underscore i in i c underscore i right. For any small i e indexed by a set i, as opposed to a class diagram of objects in c. Display style mathcal c. A continuity space is a generalization of metric spaces and poses, which uses the concept of quantiles, and that can be used to unify the notions of metric spaces and domains. See also Notes <laughs> <laughs>